update. Am I the a-hole for being suspicious of my girlfriend's friend after she tried to test me? Original post. I, 30 male, have been dating my girlfriend Olivia, 23 female, for the last year. We met at a coffee shop near my office, which I used to frequent to get my morning coffee, and she worked there as a barista. I asked her out and she said yes. Things have been great so far, and I feel we are compatible in terms of what we like and want from a relationship. She has a group of three girlfriends she is close with. These girls are always very welcome to me, but they seem very immature compared to my friends. One of the girls is Harper, 23 female. Harper is awesome and we get along well, since we like the same video games and music. Recently, Olivia and I were talking about taking our relationship to the next stage, and I asked her to move in with me. She spends four to five nights a week at my place anyways, so I asked her to just move in. For some reason, her parents are the most excited about this, as she is finally moving out of their house. She also told her friends about the same. On Saturday, Olivia decided to stay back at her parents' house to pack some of her things. Harper messaged Olivia and me that she and her friends were downtown and if we wanted to hang out with her. Olivia was gone, but she told me it was okay if I wanted to go out for drinks with the girls. I had nothing to do and hence I joined them. It was all three of her friends and me, and we went to a few bars. We lost the other two girls midway and it was just Harper and I. I was constantly messaging Olivia about what was going on as I started to get uncomfortable with the situation. As it was getting late, I told Harper that I would get an Uber for her to drop her home. She told me that she wanted to go dancing. At this point, she was visibly getting drunk. I called an Uber for her anyway. As we were leaving the bar, Harper grabbed my t-shirt and tried to kiss me. I immediately pulled back and told her that this was making me uncomfortable and I would let it pass since she was drunk. She apologized to me. As we were waiting for Uber, she again started getting handsy and told me, let's go back to your place and no one needs to know. I snapped at her at this point and told her to please shut up until she got in the car. Finally, the Uber came and I got Harper to get in. She kept on apologizing to me and telling me, please don't tell Olivia. Finally, her Uber left and I tracked it on my phone to make sure she reached home. I asked Olivia to check with Harper's roommate if she got safely to her apartment. As I was walking home, I called Olivia and told her about what happened. Olivia was crying and I was genuinely angry at Harper's behavior. Olivia tried to call Harper at night, but her phone was going straight to her voicemail. In the morning, Olivia came home and told me, Hey, it's all good. It was just a test. I was angry at this point, and I asked Olivia to explain what was going on. So, Harper messaged Olivia in the morning that Olivia was really lucky and that it passed the test. I asked Olivia if she was involved in this, and she did not know that Harper was going to test me. According to Harper, she wanted to make sure that I was not a cheater before Olivia moved in with me. Hence, she wanted to see if I accept her advances. I told Olivia that Harper is full of it because she was drunk and there was no way she was thinking straight. Moreover, when I snapped at her, she apologized and told me not to tell Olivia anything. Harper's just trying to cover for her mistake and is giving a BS excuse. Olivia thinks I'm overreacting. According to her, Harper is her best friend and will never betray her. Although the test was stupid and Harper should apologize to me, she was just looking for Olivia's best interest. Also, Olivia feels nothing happened, so I should not make a big deal out of it. I just feel Olivia is dumb and cannot see that her friend tried to get her boyfriend to cheat. I just feel she is too immature to understand Harper's true intentions and it is bothering me. I told her to stay away from Harper if she wanted us to have a happy relationship. Am I the a-hole to tell Olivia to not believe Harper's lies? Or do you think Harper's story checks out and I'm just overreacting? I have never heard of anyone hitting on their friend's boyfriend to test the relationship. It seems like the most BS excuse. Now for the top comments before reading the update. This is why you shouldn't be dating kids. Don't move her in. She's as immature as her friend. You're going to be dealing with this high school nonsense for years. To be honest, I thought I left this drama back when I graduated high school. Why would someone think it's okay for their friends to seduce their partners as a test? To be honest, I don't think it was a test, Opie. I think Harper really is that crappy friend that nearly every friend group seems to have. She really did make a move on you drunk or otherwise. And when it was clear you wanted no part of her, she decided to make it sound like she planned it, that you somehow passed a test of character. She may even convince herself that it was all from altruistic motives, but you know better. Your gut tells you that something's off about this woman, and you should trust your gut. I would give Harper a clear birth. Eventually, Olivia will see the light and cut Harper loose. But for now, you need to limit your interactions with Harper and ensure that you are never alone. She just can't be trusted. 
I would be physically incapable of being with someone that naive. And I say that as someone who is himself at times naive. Dude, I'm denser than a gold bar, and even I think that chick is being gullible. Nah, she's just not seeing something she doesn't want to see. That's denial, more so than naivete. Here's the deal. Olivia will not drop Harper no matter what. You will not be able to badmouth Harper ever without angering Olivia. And Olivia is going to believe Harper over you, which is pretty much proven already. The number of red flags here is significant. Do not move this girl into your apartment. And Harper will be coming to your apartment regularly and she will hit on you again. And again. And again. Eventually, she will get mad at her failure to steal you from Olivia. And she will tell Olivia a lie that you did. In fact, failed a test. Now be clear on this. Olivia will believe Harper, not you. You have already lost this battle. It's best to either end this relationship or keep it on a surface level. No moving in or getting married. Offer to test Harper and bang her. Then tell Olivia that Harper failed a test. Now for the update. I Tuesday regarding my girlfriend Olivia's 23 female friend Harper 23 female hitting on me last weekend and then playing it off that she was testing me if I would cheat on Olivia. Before I go to the update, let me address the issue that most of the comments were discussing. Yes, I am aware that there is a 7-year age gap between Olivia and me. It also does not help that I am a 6'4 muscular dude and she is 5'3 petite runner. I've dated girls my age, some girls slightly older than me and Olivia. I do not think maturity is a function of age. And I have dated girls my age who are more childish than Olivia. Out of all my relationships, I've been happiest in the last year with Olivia. She is not as academically gifted as I am, but she is ambitious and driven. She is a long-distance runner, runs 2-3 to three marathons per year, and is finishing her fitness training certifications. I am proud of her and how she takes care of herself. The relationship just works for us. Now for the update. Harper told Olivia that she was just testing me and Olivia initially agreed with her explanation. We discussed it and I told her my side of the story. I told her that Harper is bad news, but it's her choice if she wants to be friends with her. Olivia was more mad at Harper that she did not tell her about the test beforehand and had her doubts about Harper's story. I decided to drop the issue since I do not want Olivia to be broken off from her friend group because of me. Olivia just couldn't get over the incident and kept asking me for more details every day. Finally, yesterday we had a long discussion about it. I told her that testing someone's boyfriend is a very insecure thing to do. Doing it without telling Olivia was horrible, as she did try to kiss me and physically seduce me into coming to our apartment. My point was, if my friend ever tried to kiss Olivia and ask her to cheat on me, I would immediately drop that friend if not do something worse. She understood that, but kept on repeating, what if Harper was just acting convincingly and did something stupid but not evil? She told me that although Harper is very promiscuous, she would never try to steal someone's boyfriend. She also told me that Harper has a type of guy who she dates, and I am not the type of guy she would date. I don't want to admit it, but that did hurt my ego. Olivia just kept on repeating that we would never really know what Harper was thinking that night. She may be trying to test me, but got drunk and went too far. I told Olivia that maybe she should test Harper and see what was really on her mind. Olivia was confused, but went with what I was saying. I told Olivia to message Harper that she was going to visit her parents' place over the weekend and ask her to meet for brunch on Sunday. Harper replied and said it sounded great, and they decided a place to meet. After an hour, Olivia and I messaged Harper from my Snapchat with just a blank image and said, thinking about you. We waited for 10 minutes, and Harper replied with two topless bathroom selfies. Olivia was beyond mad at this point, but I told her to wait and see what happens next. Harper then replied saying, Hey, Olivia's gone for the weekend. Maybe I can show you this in person on Saturday. At this point, Olivia was just trying to keep it together. She snatched the phone from my hand, took a selfie of her face, and messaged it to Harper. Harper started blowing up Olivia's phone with missed calls and frantically messaging her. Her excuse was again, I was right about your boyfriend. He's a cheat. I was testing him to see what was on his mind. Olivia did not reply to any of her messages, and it took a while to console her. I felt bad blowing up their friendship, but I knew what Harper was doing that night, and I felt she should not get away with it. Did I do something extremely immature for a 30-year-old guy? Yes. Did it feel good? Also, yes. I feel any person hitting on their friend's partner deserves this treatment, irrespective of their age. I don't know if Olivia and Harper would patch up in the future, or how it will affect her friend group. I sometimes feel guilty for the fact that I went out for drinks with Harper and friends, and that led to this whole situation. Olivia does not deserve to have her best friend betray her trust in this way. 
So in the spirit of this hub, am I the a-hole for testing my girlfriend's friend who tried to test me? Not the a-hole. Childish but effective. If Harper had immediately sent your message to Olivia, the test might be inconclusive. Personally, my ego would suffer more from realizing that someone lacked sufficient belief in my integrity to think I would cheat on my spouse with them than from learning that I am not their type though. If Harper had immediately sent your message to Olivia, the test might be inconclusive. I don't believe so, because even if she had sent it to Olivia, she still sent topless selfies, which in my opinion is pretty conclusive in and of itself. I think they meant if they had just sent the message to girlfriend without sending nudes back. Not the a-hole. While I'm usually against testing, I think that given their past friendship, it was the only way to get your girlfriend to truly understand what the real Harper was like. Do yourself a favor, take your girlfriend out tonight. If she asks why, tell her to thank her for trusting you in this and to also express sympathy in how this will affect their relationship going forward. That you just want her to know that you love her, care for her and want the best for her. And while you're busy making those plans, don't forget to make plans for next Wednesday too. Is the old case of turnabout is fair play? Not the a-hole. Olivia should reply to Harper once and say something about, you may have been testing my boyfriend, which you have no right to do, but I was testing you and you failed miserably as a friend. But that may not go over well. The petty and me. Regardless of what you do going forward, it's better for Olivia to see for herself what her friend was like and could not be trusted. Sometimes you need to learn the hard way for the lesson to stick. Not the a-hole. At least Olivia knows the truth about her friend now. So are you and Olivia going forward with her plans to move in with you? You mentioned that in your original post. Yes, that was never off the table for me. I know it's easy to judge Olivia based on one incident. We have been dating for almost a year and I'm excited for her to move in. Last story. Am I the a-hole for going fishing the day my ex was giving birth? I, male 29, ended a relationship with this woman, Maria, female 27, about one and a half years ago. Our relationship was largely casual, and I made it abundantly clear to Maria that I didn't want a serious long-term relationship. Maria agreed since we had such wildly different values and beliefs. But after being together for about 11 months, she confessed that she wanted a serious relationship with the prospect of getting married. I declined, as I thought and still think that we're way too different to start something like that. We continued our relationship for a few more months when Maria brought up marriage and starting a family again. She started saying things like how her family and friends liked me as well and how it would be a great fit. At this point, I decided to break things off with Maria. I felt like we both wanted different things and it was better if we went our separate ways. Maria was devastated by our breakup and begged me to remain in contact. So I did and we kept a decently close friendship for the past one and a half years. Since then, Maria's life has been through a downward spiral. She hasn't gotten into any serious relationships. She's been in many, but they've only lasted two months at most, and most of the guys were not very good. This lifestyle has caused a lot of friction with her parents, and she tells me she no longer speaks with them because of it. Maria's also failed out of graduate school and has struggled to find work before finally landing a job she hates a few months ago. One of the guys Maria was with got her pregnant at some point, and she was scheduled to give birth at some point last week. Leading up to the birth, Maria started calling me a lot, and she seemed very apprehensive. She told me that she was terrified of becoming a mom. I tried to reassure her that she'd make a great mom, visited her several times in the past few months and helped her out whenever I could. Maria ended up giving birth last week. On the day, I was going fishing with some of my old friends that I hadn't seen in a while. When I found about the birth the following day from one of Maria's friends, I called her and congratulated her. Maria sounded exhausted but was happy I called. Later that week, I started getting a lot of messages from Maria's friends, telling me how I should have been there since Maria was so afraid. None of her family showed up, and she was hoping I'd come. One of her friends, Katie, female 28, was particularly angry. She said that I needed to be more supportive of Maria since she felt alone and I was abusing the trust Maria had in me. Honestly, I get helping out and being there for friends, but I feel like it wasn't exactly my responsibility. Also, she had two of her other friends, Katie and another girl with her on the day of the birth. So, I don't know what I could have added. Am I the a-hole? More context. For those wondering, the father is back in Austria and there is like a 60% chance he doesn't even know about the kid. All of Maria's friends know he's the dad, but they just refer to him as some a-hole. While I do want to maintain a cordial relationship with Maria, I have no interest in raising her child. Even more context. For those wondering, I knew the baby was supposed to be born last week. He was scheduled for Saturday, but the little guy decided he wanted to come earlier, so was born on Wednesday. 
I left town Tuesday night and plan on coming back on Friday. The baby was born on Wednesday and I only found out on Thursday. I called Maria afterwards and congratulated her. I did not make any promises about being there for the kid's birth. Now for the comments. Dude, she's looking for a daddy. I back away from the friendship. Not the a-hole. Was about to type this. Next, she will be asking you to do fatherly things with her kid because the kid has no father figure and pressuring you to get together. I would cut the friendship now. There was a post recently from a guy who said a woman he dated five times and never slept with tried to claim he was the father of her child. Would not be surprised if she puts his name on the birth certificate. This story was so sad poor. Dude is in court for this woman who he never even slept with, saying it's his. He'll be fine when she refuses DNA test, but that is still so terrifying. Not the a-hole. Guarantee that she had this fantasy where you bonded with a kid and came back to her. Time to walk away. 100%. Opie needed to nix this relationship long ago. If she has it already, she's developing some unhealthy attachment. And Opie is only enabling the delusion.